ask me how to put together a wardrobe, what to buy, what to wear. They're so confused. And it, it is confusing. There is so much stuff out there. So what I'm going to tell you today is some information that can help you understand how to shop and how to buy the right thing for you. Not for your friends, not for your family, although this information can help you do that as well. But I want you to focus on how to play up your assets and look your best. But before I get to that, I have some other things to tell you about as well. I actually have a fabulous, if I can reach it, a fabulous giveaway today. And it is sponsored by Alicia TV. She is awesome. She will help you to tell your vision. And she is our sponsor today. And what we have is a fabulous giveaway for You can see it from my girlfriend's closet, a $50 gift certificate for shopping. Now, let me tell you a couple of things about my girlfriend's closet. Years ago, some of you may have seen me. I did workshops there. I met some amazing women, and Lois, who's the owner, she is fabulous. She does a wonderful job. She has some beautiful clothing. In fact, it is a consignment boutique, but they were voted the best women's boutique of Carrie by Carrie Magazine. Not Best Consignment Boutique, although they certainly would win that as well, but Best Women's Boutique in all of Cary. That says a lot. In fact, when I found that out, I was very impressed, but I've always been very impressed with her. She's got a great selection, brand name, designer clothing at great prices. So $50 is going to go a long way. And I tell you something else, too. On my way over here, I checked my email. I was at a stoplight, so don't bless me. But I checked my email and saw that they're having a winter clearance sale, which means that that $50 is going to go even further. But that's not all. I'm going to give the winner. I'm going to meet the winner there. They have two locations. There's one in Apex and one in Cary. Whoever wins this gift certificate, they're going to get the $50 gift certificate, but I'm going to meet them there and give them one hour of personal shopping with me. Now, we might videotape you. That's okay. We'll make it look great. We'll make you look great. So to enter, here's what you do. You go to my Facebook page, www.facebook.com backslash one chic mama. You like my page on Facebook, and then I want you to leave a comment about the show. I want to hear your feedback. What do you like? What do you not like? What do you want to see more of? Who would you like for me to interview? Because I tell you what, starting next week, I've got some great interviews lined up. So I want to hear from you what you want to hear more of. Now, the other thing I want to tell you about is next week's show. I know it's our first episode, but I have been planning and I have some great stuff to tell you about. So next week, I have a great, just wonderful, delightful woman. And she she is a friend, although we've never met each other in person. We've gotten to know each other virtually. And her name is Julie Ann Stittick. Julie Ann is a style expert. In fact, she she and I do similar things. However, she's on the West Coast. We have similar interpretations of things, similar perspectives, but different, of course. We both like to put our own spin on things. And being a stylist, you know, we like to be a little bit opinionated. So I'm going to be interviewing her next Wednesday, February 13th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join me because we're going to be telling you, or I'm going to be interviewing you. Julianne's going to be sharing her style tips. She's got some great style tips, too, and I'm sure I'm going to learn something. So I'm excited to hear what she has to say, but she also has created an app. Now, I'm not going to tell you too many details about that right now, but if you have a smartphone, she has created an app for color. Now, color is one thing we're going to talk much more about tonight. So you can find out more about that. Her business is called Your Success Style, but she will be here with me live next Wednesday at 4 p.m. So tune in for that and don't miss it. Now, before I get started with my five tips, I want to tell you a little bit about me, who I am, why I'm here, and why you should listen to what I have to say. Well, first of all, I call myself a style and self-image expert, and I didn't just make that up. Well, I guess I kind of did, but I have, I feel in my humble opinion that I've earned that because style has truly been my passion for almost 40 years. Yeah, I'm going to date myself, but that's okay. So when I was growing up, I think I was about four or five, six years old, I started sewing. My mom sewed, and she would have these bags, fabric scraps laying around. And I would get so inspired, and I begged her, please, Mom, teach me how to sew. And of course, 20 questions a day or 20 times a day, please help me thread the sewing machine. 
So she did. She was very patient with me, and I learned how to sew. And actually, I even went through a phase where I was making custom wedding gowns. Well, I hate to say a phase. Actually, it was a kind of a career at one point. However, I remember when I was you know six years old, eight years old, somewhere in that realm, thinking I'm going to be a clothing designer. That's it. That's my path. That is what's out there for me, and that's how I can make a difference for people. That stuck in my head, and I remember telling my dad, who was an insurance agent, and he also was an entrepreneur, very pragmatic, very practical. I remember telling him at breakfast one morning, Dad, I'm going to be a fashion designer. Of course, he looked at me and said, well, how much money can you make doing that? Uh, I don't know. This was back in the late 70s. Fashion, Fashion designers weren't the celebrities that they are today. Things were very different. However, I'm sure certain people, Calvin Klein, were making a a great income. But he was skeptical. And he didn't, he encouraged me in a different way. Actually, I should say he inspired me in a different way. In fact, his mantra was dress to impress. Now, actually, I do this talk that I'm going to, or a talk around the information that I'm going to give you tonight. And I call it dress to impress because of my dad. My dad's not living anymore. But he was definitely an inspiration to me in many, many ways. Now, my mom was an inspiration to me in many ways as well. She is very stylish, very chic, and I got so much of my style, I think, from her. She definitely influenced me. In fact, I just saw her yesterday. I'm very fortunate to have a close relationship with her. She's great. We talked about style. Actually, I've created, and I'll tell you more about this later. I'm excited, so I'm getting ahead of myself. But I've created a proprietary system that I call my Style Finder system. And what it does is it gives you three keywords that help you understand what is your true style. And I'm not going to tell you what mine are yet. You have to stay tuned for that. But my mom let me take her through my style finder system so we could discover her three keywords. And it was interesting because they were pretty much what I thought they were going to be. I mean, she's my mom. I've got a good handle on her style and and really enjoy have. I've really enjoyed helping her to cultivate that over the years. So back to my career, growing up, making Barbie clothes, wanting to be a designer. I went to UNC Greensboro. I won't tell you what year I graduated, but I went, I graduated with a degree in apparel arts. Now, essentially in a nutshell, what that is, is fashion design. I was one of just a handful of clothing designers. It seemed like there were a lot of fashion merchandising majors. But I graduated with a degree in fashion design. So when I graduated, I have always lived in North Carolina. I was going to move to New York. I was going to move to Atlanta. That didn't really work out that way. I ended up staying in North Carolina, moving to Raleigh in probably in 1991. Okay, so probably get an idea of how old I am. I'm not shy about that anyway. I just turned 45. So moved to Raleigh and thought, well, what's next? What's my path? Where am me? I have a degree in fashion design. What am I going to do? And back in 1990, there really wasn't a whole lot I could do with that degree here in Raleigh. So I ended up getting a job to pay the bills, and I started my own business out of my home. Just very small at first, started doing custom work. Fast forward several years later, I opened my first store in 1997. It was called Head Over Heels. We did hats, clothing, shoes, and accessories, and I made custom wedding gowns. So back then, I began working closely with women to help them find their best fit, their best color. Who knew? There were hundreds of shades of white. In fact, I have women tell me now, white's not my best color when they're going to get married. Well, okay, maybe white's not, but there are 99 other shades to choose from, so Pick the one that's going to be best for you. So I did custom work with wedding gowns, had a store, had a lot going on. And from there, it is taken several twists and turns. And I'm trying to figure out how to fit this into just a few minutes. But from there, I ended up closing that retail store in 1999. It was a great experience, but I really wanted to focus. My focus was design. That was my passion. I was doing way too many other things. So I closed the retail store, focused on design, and actually created a wholesale business that we took to great proportions. Sold my clothing all across the country. And it's interesting to look back or to think back at what I did design. In fact, some of my former clients still tell me they still wear my clothing from way back then. It's almost vintage at this point. But it's certainly fun to hear that. 
And I was talking to somebody the other day, and they asked, well, what did you design? What did it look like? What was the fabric? And I told, I did tell them. I described it. It was very organic, very flowy. If I knew then what I know now, it would be very different. And after you hear my talk tonight or hear my tips tonight, you'll, you'll kind of get it if you see pictures. I'm not going to show you pictures tonight, but maybe in a future episode. But it's fun to look back and think, well, if I knew this, here's what I would have done. So I, that was a big learning experience for me. But it was also a great experience in terms of helping women one-on-one figure out what's their style. And I kind of have always had a sense for, well, that's not really who you are. It doesn't work for your coloring. It doesn't work for your essence. You're the essence of who you are. I, when I talk to my clients about getting dressed, it's about getting dressed from the inside out. It's not just saying, hey, I want to put these clothes on. Because your clothes should be a reflection of who you truly are. And that's one reason I've wanted to do this show is to help you discover your true style. I work with hundreds of women who tell me, I don't know what my style is. I don't have a style. I don't know what it is. I've lost my style over the years. So after hearing that from people for years and after having kids and feeling like I had lost my own style, that actually was a big wake up call for me. I had my first child in 2003. I have a nine year old daughter. Her name's Ivy. I have a six-year-old son named Dylan, and I have two bonus daughters now, Sarah and Allie. And it's been an interesting journey to go through that, especially after giving birth and feel that I was so focused on my kids that I lost my own style. I woke up one day, I'm like, I don't know who I am anymore. I don't want to wear these clothes. I need a haircut. I don't know what makeup to wear. That was a big wake-up call for me. And I thought, well, you know what? I bet there are other women out there who feel the same way. And I looked around and there were no resources, no resources for women. So that was the beginning of my journey to create that resource, to help women know what to wear, to give women a resource. So if you go to my website, which is onechicmama.com, you can go to my blog. You can read articles. Honestly, my articles go back, way back. And you can get style tips, free advice, all sorts of information. I've got a couple of books for sale on the website, but go check it out. And you can certainly learn more about what I, what I have to say, my philosophy, my tips, um, things like that. So basically the way I got into doing what I'm doing now, I feel that it's been a natural progression for me, but after having my kids, after feeling like I'm losing my own style and starting to write about it and talk about it, I had several friends ask me if I would help them figure out what to wear. And I'm like, well, that's what I'm good at. Sure. Why not? I'll come over. I'll go through your closet. I'll tell you what not to wear. I'll tell you what to wear and we'll put stuff together. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. This is it. This is the next step. Not only is this the next step, but this is why you're here. And so that was a big thing for me. My first response when I first thought about doing that or first thought about getting into image consulting The first thought was, I can't do that because I hate to speak. Well, it's kind of ironic that I'm sitting here doing a TV show right now, and I do a lot of public speaking. So my second thought was, you know, you got to get over it because you've got some information that people need to hear. So I moved forward, and One Chic Mama became what it is today. So in a nutshell, I'm a style expert. I speak. I teach. I work with clients one-on-one. I get in women's closets, and I work with them close, closely in my studio, in their closet, in the stores, and help them understand what to wear. And honestly, so many women come to me, and they're like, I don't know what to wear. I don't know what to buy. I hate to shop. My philosophy, I should, well, I guess it is a philosophy, but what I've found is that the reason women hate to shop is because they don't know what to buy. And they don't know what to buy because they don't start with what I'm going to teach you tonight. They start by walking into a store and they become overwhelmed. Have you ever felt that way? Yeah, I have years ago. I have experienced that. It's been a very long time, but I can relate so much of what I teach. I learned because I've been there too. So when I say anything, it is not to judge anybody. It is only to help you learn because 
I've been there and I've done that and I moved past it. And I know when you get to the other side, it's great. But what I've found is that so many women lose their style. And you think, you know, we're busy. We have jobs or we have kids or we have family to take care of. And we have a million other things going on. How do you stay focused on what your style is? And if you think about it, your style kind of changes a little bit. I like to believe that the essence of your style is the same from the minute you're born to the minute you die. It's just the expression of that, the way you put things together and express it. When you're younger, you can be bold. You can be more dynamic. When you're a little bit older, you need to tone it down a little bit. So some of the tips we're going to talk about today are good for, actually, I take that back. All of the tips we're going to talk about today are good for all ages. In fact, I talk to my kids about this stuff. My daughter knows what her eye enhancer is, which you're going to find out in a few minutes. My husband knows what his hair enhancer is, and he, which it, he wears it a lot. And I always tell him, hey, you're wearing your hair enhancer. And people ask him, hey, did your wife dress you? I'm like, no, 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 he, he does great on his own. He's got a good sense for it. But I think if there's, I think my point is that there are some easy tips that I'm going to share with you today that you can implement right now. Now, one thing that drives me crazy is when women come in my studio and they tell me, or not even in my studio, when I meet women at a networking event or at a party or at a friend's house, and they tell me, hey, when I lose 20 pounds, I'm going to call you. I'm like, what? Why would you wait until you lose 20 pounds? Because it's not about me. This is about you. This is about you saying yes to yourself. This is saying, hey, I deserve to look great right now. Right now, at the size I am, at the weight I am, at the age I am, it doesn't matter. The numbers do not matter. What matters is that you play up your assets and your attributes and that you dress for who you are. What is hair enhancer? We have a question. Oh, let me, before I get started. I want questions. I love questions. I love to do Q&A, and I feel like that's really where the learning comes in, because I'll tell you stuff all day long, but you may be thinking, what the heck is she talking about? So if you have questions, look at the number on the screen. You can call that. It's 919-518-9773. Or if you're on Skype, you can Skype to Computers 2K Voice. Let me know your question. Alicia, I'm going to get back to that. Give me just a few minutes and we're going to get into color. Now, before I start, what I want to encourage you to do is take some notes. Why? Because this is great information and not just because I'm sharing it. This is the core. This is the essence of where it all starts. And when you know this information, I want you to go back to it and refer back to it over and over and over again. Now, the other thing I'm going to say is that I want you to pick one thing to start with. This may be overwhelming to you, and you may say, oh, I don't have any idea where to start. One small thing. What one thing could you do tomorrow from what I'm going to talk about tonight? Now, I'm going to come back to this in a few minutes, but I want you to take some notes, and if something stands out as, oh, my gosh, I've got a something, something tomorrow or something clicks for you, make a note of it. Go to your closet and pull out that outfit right now. Or write it down. Because that's where change starts. You get inspired. I want you to get inspired tonight. I want, hope I inspire you. If I don't, let me know. Let me know what I can do to inspire you. But I want you to think about what one thing. Don't worry. If one thing stands out, don't worry about the other stuff. You can always come back and you can watch this episode on NissanCommunications.com backslash onechicmama.php. And I know that's a mouthful. But you, I want you to come back and refer to this. Focus on one thing and come back to the other stuff later. Take notes. But the first thing, the first thing all women must know is the power of color. Color. Yes, I'm wearing color tonight. No black for me. In fact, I do wear black, but I rarely wear black. And I tell you why. Because a lot of women wear black by default. And it's not their best color. I talk a lot about black and I get a little sassy when I talk about wearing black. But the reason is because I know I've gone through phases where I've worn nothing but black. 
But I work with so many women who have nothing but black in their closet because they don't know what else to wear. And they're stuck in a rut. And they think, oh, I've got a big event, black dress. Going to work, black pants, black top, black shoes, done. Well, it's simple. And you don't have to think about it. But if I tell you what, color is the first thing people will notice about you. When you walk into a room, people are going to notice. And black recedes. Black can be very dramatic, but black can also make you look like a wallflower. And it can make you look tired. It can make you look old. And it can enhance your wrinkles. I'll talk about that for a minute. It's a wrinkle enhancer. Who needs that? My six-year-old son tells me all the time, Mom, you've got wrinkles. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to enhance those. I want to make those go away. So I certainly don't want to wear anything that I know is going to play those up. But color has the power to affect your mood. It can make you stand out and make you memorable for all the right reasons. Now, I want you to think about the colors that you wear. I talk to so many women who are afraid of wearing color. They don't know because they don't know what to wear. It's, It's a confidence thing. And I like to talk about wearing color with confidence. You know, wear black with intention, wear color with confidence. Don't. Wear something because your best friend wore it or because your cousin wore it or somebody told you, oh, you've got to have that color. It's the hot color of the season. Actually, let me say, take a minute and talk about comparing yourself. Now, this is something I'm going to talk about over and over and over again. So let me just throw it out there for color. When you look at your best friend or you look at somebody who looks fabulous, maybe they're wearing the hot color right now. Actually, orange or tangerine was the color for 2012. And that actually is a hard color to wear. Unfortunately, it came out everywhere. The designers were pushing it. The stores had it. People saw it everywhere. Personally, I love tangerine. It's not my best color at all. So what did I do? I bought, actually, I bought this jacket. And I thought, this is the closest I'm going to get to orange. Orange does not work for me. It looks great on my son. Totally works for his coloring, but this does not work, or it does not work with my coloring, but this does work with my coloring. So that's a great example of taking something that's hot or taking something that you see everybody wearing and saying, eh, that may or may not be my best color. What would be my best version of it? So don't compare yourself. However, I will say if you see somebody who has your similar coloring, Take that and learn from it. If you see she's got blue eyes and she's wearing her blue. Actually, I'll talk about your eye enhancer. Your eye enhancer is the color I want you to wear tomorrow. Yes, that's an assignment. But when you wear your eye enhancer, especially if you have blue eyes or green eyes, they are going to pop. If you're in the media, if you're having your picture taken, or even if you're just getting out of bed tomorrow, wear your eye enhancer. One of my daughters has beautiful blue eyes, and she wears her eye enhancer all the time. And I always tell her, you're wearing your eye enhancer. And she's like, I know, I know. And I know she gets tired of hearing it, but her eyes look amazing. I'm like, I want you to wear that color every day because it looks fabulous. So think about what colors make you look fabulous. This is where comparisons don't matter because I could wear blue. I could wear teal blue all day long, and I do. I love it, but I don't have blue eyes, so it is not my eye enhancer. My eyes are actually hazel. So when I wear things that are hazel, my eyes pop. It's a different effect from having blue or green eyes, though. That is a hard thing to compare to. Okay, what's the question? What is the color of 2013? I'm going to get to that, and how best can I wear it? Thank you for that. The color for 2013 is emerald green. And you actually, let me talk about that for a minute. I'm going to talk about this from a general sense as well as a specific sense. But the color for 2013 is emerald green. Now, emerald green is a beautiful green. It's got more blue in it than it does yellow, which means that it's going to be great for cooler people who relate more to cooler seasons. Summers and winters, really. It doesn't mean that if you have warm skin, you can't wear it. But what it does mean is that I want you to take that and not feel dictated to. Take that and use it as a guide. Okay, green is hot this season. Emerald green, what's my best shade? And how can it best work for me? But the three things I want you to consider when you're looking at colors, your eye color, 
When you wear your eye color, that is your eye enhancer. When you wear your hair color, that is your hair enhancer. And when you wear your skin tone, that is your skin enhancer. Now, I also talk about intensifiers. And what that is, that is the color opposite your personal coloring on the Munsell color wheel. And so when you have an intensifier, your intensifier for your eyes is going to, say if you have green eyes, it's going to be purple. If you have blue eyes, if they're blue-gray, it's going to be yellow. If they're blue-green, it's going to be a red. But notice how color shows up and how it makes you look great. But I also want you to notice if you put on a color and you feel like, ah, oh, not sure about this color. Should I wear this? Uh, and you're asking five salespeople and you're not believing what they have to say. They're saying, oh, yeah, that's fabulous on you. No. Trust your intuition. Do not trust anybody else except me or another style expert who know what they're talking about. Because when you trust a salesperson, they might be just trying to make a sale. Now, I'm not talking bad about anybody. However, I have heard salespeople over and over and over in the fitting room giving bad advice. And I just want to scream, no, don't tell her that. And I sometimes I butt in. I do. I have to admit that. But I can't help it. I want people to get what they need. And I want people to get what works for them. Now, we have another question. What are some great emerald green clothing items or pieces that I've seen? Well, I've seen a lot. Actually, I love Pinterest. In fact, if you're on Pinterest, follow me at One Chic Mama. And in fact, that's a great place. But there I was looking at somebody's board and I need to start one myself. But I was looking at someone else's board who had a whole board filled with emerald green things. Now, emerald green is a fabulous color and it's what I would call an accent color. I talk about two different colors, core colors and accent colors. Now, let me back up, and Alicia, I'll answer your question about hair enhancer. Your hair enhancer is going to be your new black. Yeah, if you want to find your best neutral and a replacement for black, look to your hair color. And I guarantee you it will make a huge difference. That's going to be what I call your core color. When you have your core neutrals, that's your foundation for building a wardrobe. And when you have that, you always have something to wear. Now, emerald green, your brights, well, let me back up and say core colors are least memorable and most neutral. Now, when you wear emerald green, it is much more memorable. If you wear a pair of pants in emerald green, people are going to notice. And if you wear them two days in a row, people are really going to notice. And if you wear them five days in a row, people are going to think you just don't like to do laundry. <laughs> but if you wear brown pants, what... That's going to be a great core color. And in fact, if you're traveling or you just are trying to stick to a budget and you don't want a closet filled with clothes, you don't need a closet filled with clothes. You just need the right pieces. But if you don't want a closet filled with clothes, wear core neutrals more often or your core pieces. So if you have brown pants, you could wear those brown pants five days in a row. You change your colors, your tops, your jacket, your jewelry, your shoes, give it a whole different look. But your core items are going to be like chameleons, and that's what's going to give you mileage and what's going to help you over and over and over to build an outfit. So if you don't have those, that's that would be what I would call a hole in your closet. If you don't have the right core items, that's a big hole in your closet. That's a big gap. And I want you to think about what core items could I add in. And we'll, we'll talk more about that on a, in another day. But think about what core items you could wear that are really going to help you get more mileage from what's in there right now. Now, getting back to the green, green is what I, the emerald green is what I would call an accent color. And that's where you bring in color. You bring in things that are memorable. If you just have core neutrals in your wardrobe, that's boring. You need to freshen it up. And that's a great way to make your wardrobe look current. You take your core items, you bring in your accent colors, your accent pieces, bring it in in tops, shoes, shoes in neutral, or I'm sorry, in emerald green. Actually, one thing we're seeing a lot of the spring are mint-colored shoes. Now, they're not for everybody. Mint and nectarine shoes. We're seeing a lot of mint jeans. But we're seeing a lot of emerald accents, purses, jewelry, necklaces. I wouldn't do nail polish. However, it's a great color for your skin. Shoes. I think shoes and emerald green would be fabulous. So think about accent items. And honestly, I'll just tell you real quick before we move on to the, the second item Accent pieces are where I want you to go cheap. Yeah, you have my permission. Go to Forever 21 or go to Old Navy or go to Target. 
don't spend a lot of money because it's not something you're going to have in your wardrobe for a long time. That's for your core items. The core items are your investment items. Your accent pieces, they're fat, like fast food for your wardrobe. They're in one season, they're out the next. They don't stick around. Okay, so the last thing I'll say about color is if you have a closet filled with black, I want you to think about what else could I wear? What else could I wear? What do I want to wear? What makes me light up? What makes me feel great? Now, your goal with color is you want to bring light to the face. So if you wear color below the waist and black up top, it's good. It's a, it's a start, but start with wearing a colored top or start with putting color around your face or start even with brightening up your makeup and see what a difference it makes. Because I guarantee you, if you swap out black, in fact, I worked with a client last week. I was in her closet. She wore a lot of black, a lot of black pants. And I find that, in fact, most places I go, I've started counting. And I'm not here to pick on anybody, but it's just interesting to me because of what I do and what I hear to notice. And I was in a meeting the other day. 20 people were there. 10 people had on black pants. In fact, my mom and I were talking about being somewhere recently. I won't tell you where. I don't want to pick on anybody, but she started noticing. And she's like, yeah, half the people there. And it's generally, it's about 50% of the women anywhere are going to be wearing black pants. And there's really nothing wrong with black pants. However, there is a better choice. So like the client I worked with the other day, she was just so used to wearing black pants and then whatever top, because pretty much anything goes with black. Doesn't always look your best on you. But pretty much anything goes with black. But I told her, I said, try some caramel colored pants, which related to her hair color. And then she wore a turquoise top in her eye color. She said she came out of the closet. And her husband was like, man, Mary Michelle knows what she's talking about. And I thought, that's all. You know, I, of course, I love that he attributed that to me. But I love that she tried it. And I love that he noticed. Because it didn't just, it wasn't that it was just a different color. It was that it. It was relating to her personal coloring. So it looked better on her overall, but it made her personally, it highlighted her attributes and her assets and made her stand out for all the right reasons. Now that's your goal. And I tell my clients, your real goal is not to say, hey, that's a great top or that's a great necklace, but hey, you look gorgeous. You look beautiful. That's what you want because you know that when that happens, you've done everything right. Now, we have a question. One of our listeners asks if she has blondish hair, what is her hair enhancer color? Well, what I say to that, especially with blonde, well, first of all, I could spend the whole night talking about color, and I'm not going to, I promise, but let me just touch on this real quick because color is important. Okay, blonde hair. First of all, nobody has just one color in their hair. So what you want to do is you want to look at overall. What's the tone? Is it light blonde? Do you have dark roots? Do you have dark undertones, low lights, do you have highlights? What's your, what's the overall tone? That would be essentially your hair enhancer. Now, if you have a lot of dark in your blonde hair, maybe go a step darker. Now, what I do tell clients is when you think about color, think of it like paint swatches, you know, like the paint chips. I wish I had one here, but it goes from light to dark. And so think of the hue. You want something in the similar hue, but it could be a different value. Maybe it's lighter. Maybe you go a little bit darker for pants because if you want to if you want your pants to be slimming you want a darker color you don't necessarily want to wear khaki or a light color so go for a deeper richer brown maybe it's a chestnut or a coffee or an espresso but you want to be careful that even though you go brown you may go too deep or too intense and i'll talk more about that on another day i promise but think about the intensity of the color now I want to talk about, just take a quick break and tell you, I know we've had a lot new, a lot of new people tuning in, and I want to tell you about the giveaway that I've got and how fabulous it is. So for one quick second, I am giving away, yes, it's my very first show and I have a giveaway. Thank you, Alicia TV, My Girlfriend's Closet, fabulous consignment shop in Apex, North Carolina, and in Cary. They have graciously contributed a $50 gift certificate. And not only are you going to get this gift certificate, but I'm going to give you one hour of shopping with me at my girlfriend's closet. So I want you to enter this. To do that, go to my Facebook page, www.facebook.com backslash one chic mama. Like my Facebook page. Tell me what you liked about the show. Give me your feedback. Tell me what you want to see. But 
My Girlfriend's Closet is a fabulous place to shop, and it's a great place to go to beef up your wardrobe. It's a great place to go to look for color. In fact, I'm sure Lois has some fabulous emerald green items right now. So go check that out. Now, point number two, and I know it's taken me a long time to get to point number two, but color is so important. So point number two is dressing for your body type. I want you to dress for the body you have right now. Now, if I don't say anything else about that, that is enough. Because I actually, I was poking around online today, and this statistic just came from Google, so I don't know how accurate it is, but in my findings, I find I think it's pretty accurate. Eight out of ten women do not dress for their body type. Are you one of them? Chances are you are. And I think a lot of that is because you may not know what your body type is. You may be stuck in the body you had in high school, mentally. Or you may think, well, my body's changed. I talk to a lot of women who have babies and their body changes. Or they're hitting menopause and their body changes. And they don't know how to dress it anymore. But my best tips for you is to notice the body. This is without judgment. Look at your body and say, what do I need to play up? What do I need to play down? Now, I can't go into any more specifics right now. But I want you to dress for your body at this moment. Now, I will tell you, if you want to know your personal coloring and your personal body type and everything, all the elements I'm talking about tonight, I want to tell you about a class I've got coming up. It is called a Discovery 101 session. And what I've done is I've condensed everything that I do with my private clients into a two-hour session. You're going to learn your personal coloring, your face shape, your body type, your personal scale. Actually, I take that back, four items. And we're going to talk about five tonight, which you'll hear a little bit more about. But... I'm just going to give you the URL real quick, but essentially it's a Discovery 101 session here with me in my studio. And what you'll come away with is your personal image blueprint. Now, the URL for that is HTTP backslash backslash colon backslash backslash tinyurl.com backslash OCM discovery. You can also go to my Facebook page, One Chic Mama at Facebook, and read about it there. You've got all the information there to sign up with details. And you also get two free bonuses, how to build a wardrobe and what to wear. Ebooks that I've written that are going to help you understand what to wear. All right, back to our content. Number three, your face shape. Your face shape matters. You know the big aha I had around face shape is a couple of years ago. Shoes. Your face shape dictates what shoes you wear or dictates your best shoes. And I remember growing up, I always, so many people have heard the story, but I always tried to wear round toe flats and I felt dorky. And I thought, well, maybe it's because I'm tall or maybe it's because I wear a size nine at the time. I'm a 10 now after having kids, but maybe it's because I have big feet. I don't know. But anyway, it just felt weird. And then years ago, I did my training for what I do now. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's my face shape. And I don't know if you can tell, but my face shape is a diamond. Yeah, it's because of my cheekbones. I don't have much of a forehead. But again, there's no judgment around my face shape. It's like when you can understand what you have and what you have to work with, your face shape really, what that influences is your hairstyle, your neckline, your, your jewelry, your lapels on your jacket, your shoes, your handbag, your prints. Essentially, what you want to do is figure out what your face shape is and repeat those lines in everything. That symmetry creates harmony. And it's going to make a big difference in the big picture. So think about your face shape and how that makes a difference. Now, number four, your personal scale. Your personal scale is made up of your height, your weight, your hair. How big is your hair? Think about Oprah. She's, She's a big woman. She's got big hair. If she were this big around, it would look weird, but it is in proportion. And she wear, consequently, she wears things that are in proportion. She can rock a big statement necklace. She needs that. In fact, if she wears something smaller, it's going to get lost. It's like, what's the point? But I wear a big watch. I wear a big, chunky bracelet because I'm a, I've actually created a whole little um, system that I use with my clients And I've got four categories. I have the Dainty Diva, which is petite. I have the Glamour Girl, medium in scale. I have the Rock Star. Woohoo! I'm a rock star. And then I have the Goddess. And what that helps women do is understand. And actually, if you go to Pinterest, go to One Chic Mama on Pinterest, 
you will find rock star style, dainty diva style, and you'll see, you'll get a picture or multiple pictures of what this means. Because what this relates to most often is your accessories. And that is a question I get asked about us over and over and over. What accessories do I wear? How many accessories do I wear? How do I put them together? And if you think about all the things that we're talking about tonight, everything influences. Certainly your coloring, you want to dress for your body type, but your scale helps you understand, can I wear a big statement necklace or do I need to wear a tiny little necklace? Think about it and see, well, actually one question I want you to ask yourself, does the necklace wear me? And that's true with anything. If you put any piece of clothing on and you feel like, whoa, I see the jacket coming. And then, oh, yeah, there's Christy. Or there's Alicia. There's, it, you don't, that's not what your goal. Or maybe it is your goal, but that's not what, in my humble opinion, your goal should be. Your goal should be to wear things that enhance you. Wear a necklace that's going to pick up your eye color. Or wear a jacket that's going to make you stand out for all the right reasons. And wear something that's going to be in harmony with you, with what you have physically, with who you are internally. And it just creates this magic. It's all in harmony. It's all in sync. And people are just like, wow, you look fabulous. And they can't put a finger on what exactly looks fabulous because it just all works. That's magic. And that's your goal. So think about your scale. Next time you go to buy a purse, do you want a big old whopping purse? That you can haul around tons of stuff. That's what I like. But you know what? I'm almost 5'10", so that works for me. In fact, if I carried a dainty little bag under my shoulder, it would look weird. And it would make me look bigger. Now, that's not my goal. But if you're petite and you carry a big bag, it's going to make you look smaller, but not thinner. Yeah, it's not thinner. It's more petite. Out of proportion is a better way to phrase that. So think about your personal scale. Now, the last element I want to talk about, number five, is your personal style. What is your style? Do you know? Honestly, I went for years, and I've always felt like I had a good sense of my personal style. But it really was, and that's actually, looking back, that's my story. That's my obsession and my passion is style. What does somebody's style say about who they are? What does it say? It draws you in. When somebody expresses who they are, you're like, Oh, you're just magnetically attracted and you can't help but want to know more. Who is this person? What does she do? What does she eat? Where does she hang out? What music does she listen to? And at least I, I found that and I found that to be true for a lot of people. And certainly as an entrepreneur, I tell, I do a lot of speaking and one of my big talks is called leverage your signature style for success. Now we'll talk more about that, but what that's about is expressing yourself authentically through your image, especially if you're an entrepreneur and you're out there, you're going to meetings, networking, talking to people, and they want to get to know you just because of how you show up. You're not wearing what I call your shoulds. Your shoulds are what, really, what you should, or your, your shoulds are really your shouldn'ts. If you ever feel like you should wear something, you probably shouldn't because you're wearing it for the wrong reasons. I'm not talking about a uniform or anything like that, but... What I'm talking about is something that you feel like, well, I'm going to a networking meeting. I should wear my little black suit so I can look like everybody else. Well, you know what? Who's going to stand out? If you walk into a networking meeting and 50 people are wearing a little black suit, who's going to remember you? But if you walk into a meeting or an event and everybody's wearing a little black suit and you walk in in your red dress and you are kicking butt and looking fabulous, people are going to be like, wow, I want to get to know her. But it has to be authentic. It has to be who you are. It can't just be, oh, I'm going to wear this crazy hat and show up because I want attention. It's got to be you just being you. So, but your personal style, when you understand what that is and express yourself in a way that is truly you, it's, it's just magical. And it really helps you to connect with who you are. So years ago, I actually created <clears throat> my proprietary system that... Uh, that is called my style finder system. And you'll hear me talk uh, so much more about that. But really, I started thinking about it. And so many women would come to my studio and say, I don't have a style. I don't know what my style is. Or I've lost my style after raising kids and taking care of everybody else. Where do I even start? And so I kept hearing this and I kept thinking, everybody's got a style. I know I've always had a distinct s sense of style. And in fact, I remember growing up, my style was really, really preppy. 
believe it or not. Yeah. I had the purse covers and the watch 